Hi, my name is Melinda and I'm one of the founders of Flipped. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download the Flipped app and go over some of the amazing features that it has. Let's just jump right into it. The very first step is to download the app. This means going to your phone's app store. From the main search, you're gonna to wanna to search for the name of the app, which is Flipped and that's F-L-I-P-P-D and hit search. You can either click in if you wanna preview the app a little bit more or you can download it right from this screen by hitting the get button. Now mine has the cloud button because I have previously downloaded this before, but I'm gonna go ahead and click that and it'll start to download it to your phone. Then you can go back to your main screen, open from there or simply open it from that screen as well. The very first thing that you'll see is this message regarding tracking activity. Now we are never gonna collect any personal data from you. All of your credit card information, your financial information is going to be tracked by Apple. We don't ever see that. The only thing that we use is your email to let you know about any promotions, things like that, that we would need to contact you for. And we also track aggregate data, which is not personal data at all. So it's completely up to you and it won't affect how the app runs on your phone. The next screen you're going to get is your sign in screen. So it automatically defaults to create account and you can either, as you can see, use your Google account, your Apple account, or you can use your email. In this case, I'm going to use Apple. If you're an Apple user, it's going to ask for your passcode so it knows it's you. I want to stop and mention that one thing that you did not see on that screen is a subscription pop-up. As a new user, you will get that first thing before you add your items. It's $9.99 per month, but it is free for the first seven days, so that will not kick in until after your free trial. We've already signed up as users, so it did not pop up for us. Those subscriptions are handled by Apple, which is why we never collect any financial data, anything like that. So from here, you can start adding your inventory and tracking your sales. You can add your first item using that big bold button or the plus sign down here at the bottom. So here is your add item screen. The only thing mandatory here are your description, your cost, and your date acquired. Let's go through and fill this out together. Now let's say that I wanted to sell an iPad mini. You have two options, which is to use a photo that you already have taken, or you can take a photo right then with your camera. This is very helpful if you're at garage sales. I'm gonna to choose to take a photo now. On the bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and select use this photo. Now you can crop it here if you'd like to or rotate it. It does default to square mode. Once you've determined it's good to go, you can hit done. For description, this can be long, short, whichever you'd like. I'm just gonna type in iPad mini. Let's say I got this for $25, so you fill in your cost of goods. The date acquired will default to today's date or the date that you're entering it. You are able to go back and choose an earlier date if you so choose. If I got this two weeks ago, I can select that date instead. I'm gonna select electronics for my category. Type in a storage location. Anything else that you'd like to know or remember or reference about this inventory item, you can list under notes. I'm going to go ahead and select unlisted for this item. Once your first item is entered, it's going to default you to the home screen. Here you're going to see a general overview of your inventory. As you can see, I only have one item and it is unlisted at the moment. Below that is the performance bar. That's gonna be dependent on your own metrics. Then you'll see your last seven day sales. Now this graph is very similar to the one that you would find on eBay. However, it will track over all of your platforms instead of just one. Now, before we go any further, let's go ahead and customize some of our categories. To do that, I will hit my settings button, the wheel in the top right corner, and you'll see the second part down, you have some areas that you can customize. I clicked categories, and if you'd like to customize this, you just toggle that over until it turns blue. And those bars on the right, if you click them, you can change them, you can rename them. And if you swipe to the left, you can get rid of them. So if I never sell books, I can go ahead and just trash that. Now you can always get those back later as well by taking off the custom categories. I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up because we are a very simple store. We don't sell antiques or any of these things. Now I've simplified it down to the categories that we sell in. 
but I want to change the other category to something else. Let's say I want a specific category for accessories. I simply just have to change the name there, save it, and now when I put an item into my inventory system, I'll have clothing, accessories, and shoes as options. Now let's take a look and customize our platforms. I'm going to go back to the previous screen and select platforms. Same idea on this screen. I'm going to select the use custom and then I'm going to go through and delete the platforms that I do not use. This is probably one of the first things that I would do as a new user just to make sure it's really tailored to you and your specific selling needs. If you sell on a marketplace that is not on this list, it's as simple as hitting the green plus sign button, typing the platform name in. I'm going to use custom platform and then you fill in the fee percentage that that platform charges. From there, you get to select what color that is. That's going to be for your graphs so that it differentiates between the platforms. Another ability that you have from this screen is to change your fee percentages. So for eBay, that can vary pretty drastically depending on what you promote your items at, if at all, and also what category you're selling in. You simply have to click into it and change the fee percentage right there. Hit save and it will default to that the next time you use that platform. So far, you've seen the very basics. You've seen me create an account, add my first item, and customize my platforms and percentage fees. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to create a listed item as well as a sold item to your inventory. I will also show you how to scratch an item and delete an item as well as go over what that means. After we've added our first item, you can continue to add more by using that green plus sign at the center middle of your screen. Let's go ahead and create a listed item. I'm not gonna upload a photo each time just for the sake of the tutorial. I'm gonna sell a sweater, put my cost of goods in, and as you can see, I only have three categories now. And now I'll just select listed, and it will pop up and ask you to select which platforms that you have this on. We list on Poshmark and eBay, I'll go ahead and select those, and then I'll hit list. Now, if I go back to my home screen, you'll see that I have two total items now, and one is unlisted and one is listed. Let's go ahead and create a sold item. I'll sell some shoes and now I'll hit the sold button. There are more pop-ups to fill in once you hit the sold because it needs to know where I sold it on. Once I enter my gross price that it sold for, you'll see that the fees automatically calculate to whatever percentage is listed for that platform. Now for shipping, this is where you enter what you paid for the shipping. So that will be manually entered. If this sold on Poshmark and it didn't sell on an offer, then my shipping cost will be $0 and I can just hit sold. Now you can see that my total items are different as well as my performance bar. You see that I've now moved from hoarder closer to a seller. So that will move depending on how many things you've sold, listed, and how many are in your death pile. You can also see that the graph updated as well. Now that I have sold an item, I have a bar there and it's just the one sale. So it's $20 across all three dates. I'm gonna click on the inventory icon at the bottom of the screen. And there's where it's going to default to every single one of my items, no matter what category it is. If I only wanted to see my unlisted items, I would select that. Same for listed, same for sold. Under more, there you will find where your death pile items will be stored, your scratch pile, as well as your recently deleted items, which will be there for three days before they are permanently deleted. Let's take a look at reports now that we have a couple things in our inventory. It says that this last updated a moment ago, but in order to update it at any time, you just simply pull the screen down until you see that refresh and it'll go ahead and just refresh it right then for you. As you can see on this screen, you're gonna get an overview of your numbers. I have my monthly numbers as well as my year to date. If I scroll down, this is where once I enter any expenses or miles driven, it's going to show up here. And then your sales by quarter, your platform performance, and at the bottom, your top category performance. If I had more categories, there would be the option to expand that. Since I only have three, they're all listed right there 
shoes being my number one category at the moment. Going back to the inventory screen, I do want to show you some of the quick swipe features. If I swipe right on a listed item, my option is to mark it as sold. If I do that, my pop-ups will prompt me to fill in the information before I do so, and then it will change the status to sold. On unlisted, you'll see that my option is to mark it as listed. It always defaults to the next logical category. And if I do that, it will pop up and ask me what platforms it currently is listed on. On sold, my swipe right feature is to make any adjustments. That would include things like returns or partial discounts that you gave the buyer. You can also do any of these status changes by clicking into any item and scrolling to the bottom and marking the next status there as well. Now my swipe left features, you'll see I have a scratch option and a trash option. Scratching an item would be if you discovered a flaw in the item or you decided not to sell it for whatever reason, but you still need to account for the buy cost of that item. Trash means it was simply a mistake and that's gonna go to your trashed item. And then after three days, as I mentioned, it will no longer exist anywhere in your inventory. Let's go ahead and scratch this item. You'll see it disappears from my inventory list, but it will still be tracked in my report section. You'll see that the item is still accounted for there under the cost of goods scratched so that you always know how much money that you have into your business at any time. And of course, if you go back to your inventory screen over to the more, select your scratch pile, that is where you'll find that item now. Now that I've shown you the basics as well as the reports page, I wanna go to the more section and show you some cool things there that you can do. Now I'm gonna transition over to the more screen and show you some of the really cool features that are there, such as goal setting, tracking your expenses, your aging inventory and your death pile and mileage tracker. So down at the bottom, you'll see the icon for more. Here's where you're gonna track your expenses. So let's say I have an expense for renting a storage unit. I'll type that in there. Rent, storage, however you wanna track that. Uh, and I pay $50 a month for that. I'm gonna record that as a business expense, make any notes that I need to, and save that. Now, if I go back to my reports page, go ahead and refresh. And you'll see now that that expense is recorded there. I can do the same with mileage. Let's say I had a trip that I needed to make for inventory. I went 100 miles to do that for easy math and you'll see that that math is already done for you. I can just write something to describe this like inventory trip. Again, I have the option of making any other additional notes, saving that, going back to the reports page, you'll see that my miles are now also recorded there. Another really awesome feature is that I can write in my own goals. On the goals page, you can add personal goals. They can be as big or as little as you want. Now let's say I wanna make a listing goal. And what I want to do is list five items per day. My target date to do this is by the 25th. Again, you can make any notes, save that. Once you have some goals listed, you can either trash them saying, you know, that's not a realistic goal for me anymore, or you can mark them as completed. So let's say I've done this. So I just mark it as complete, and now it'll be on my completed screen there as opposed to in progress. Let me show you briefly the aging inventory and the death pile screens. Clicking into the aging inventory icon, off screen I made a couple of older listings. They're broken down here easily for you to see how long they've been listed for. You do have everything under 30 days as one, and those are good. You have an over 30 days, 60, 90, 180, and over a year. If you click into each one of those, it will take you right to those items that have been listed for that amount of time. This is a great way to keep track of those items that you really need to do something about. If something has been sitting for 365 days, it may be time to revisit that item and see what you can do to either make a sale or even add it to your scratch pile. In the death pile screen, you're gonna see a lot of really good information here. So your cost of goods will be just what you entered for what you paid for the item. It's gonna tell you how many's there in your pile. Now the potential value is just a basic three times the value of your cost of goods. So it could be more than that, it could be a little less. That's probably gonna be about the average of what you'll find as a value. 
The time needed is based on 15 minutes per item to move that to a listed item, to put that out into your platforms in order to make your sales. Anytime you see these question marks here, you can just tap it and it will explain all of this for you as well. Below that, you're gonna see the way that they're categorized. Your most expensive items are going to be first. That's what you paid for those items. So $48 obviously is a good chunk of change. That's gonna be on top. It's gonna to say you should list this first because you have the most money into it. Below that, it'll go by age. So you'll have your oldest one. Back on the home screen, we define a death pile item as an unlisted item that is older than 30 days. Once the item hits 31 days, it's automatically into your death pile. You do not have to do that manually. The app will keep track of that for you. Now we are the only app that shines a light on this biggest pain point for resellers. We're the only ones that include this death pile analysis that is gonna be so helpful for you to really motivate you and encourage you to make the most money that you can in your reselling business. The last feature that I wanna show you in this video is the live chat. At any point in time from any screen, you can click on this help button and you can go to live chat. And that is always gonna be, as you can see, myself or a Dean. I'm gonna send a message and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. So much like a text message, you can say if it's seen, if they haven't seen it yet, and these are the general responses. <laughs> so as you can see, uh, the response is almost immediate and we keep an eye on that all day. Adine also suggested from my phone that he's using that we go ahead and take a look at the articles. So what does that mean? Down here, there are a number of articles that walk through, much like this video, how to do things step by step. This is a really good guide for new users just to walk through the basics or if you get stuck somewhere, this will really walk you through it. There are two ways to access those articles. One is at the bottom of the live chat screen. Also, you can click into the help center and that will take you to all of the articles as well. You can also type in some search terms. Say for example that you needed help with inventory. I can just type that in and it will bring up the articles that pertain to anything related to inventory. At the bottom of all of these articles, uh, it asks if this answered your questions. Please go ahead and rate that because we're gonna use that in the future for refining these and as a way to better help you. So there you have an overview of our basic flipped app features. Hopefully this video was helpful to you. Please comment below specific videos that you would like to see, specific questions that you have that we can answer. We are gonna be putting more of these videos together. Those videos will go more in depth into the different features of the app and we'll spend a little bit more dedicated time on how they work and how you can use them to better your business. This really was just the basics. We have so much more that's coming. You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Get Flipped. Besides following us, go to your app store right now, download the app, see what value it can bring to your business. Remember, this is just the beginning. We have so many cool features coming your way. This is really how resellers are going to do business. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please leave your comments below, give us a thumbs up, and give us five stars on the app. Until next time, my name is Melinda. I'll see you on the next video. Take care until then.